So, that 3 make trailer, eh? Game's looking pretty sick, and it looks like we'll finally be delving into Jill's psychology since she was stated to have had nightmares since the mansion incident in the original, and they may be extending the tea infection plot line from the original to go along with it. Nice. I know some people wanted the game to be in first person like RE7 so that all three styles of RE would be represented in the remakes, and while having Nemesis bust through a wall to get you in VR would be fucking amazing, I think that should be reserved for new characters like Ethan, not established ones like Jill. Why bother playing as Jill if you never see her face, you know? They definitely made the right call here. I also like the new design, though I do have some concerns. And no, this isn't one of those SJWs are ruining RE3 videos, because I don't think Capcom gives the shit about those people? You know, aside from the fighting game division. Here's why the change happened. With the RE engine having such photorealistic graphics, as well as the game's tone being much more dark and serious than the somewhat campy original, the designs of the characters have to match. It's why RE2, 3, and even DMC5 to an extent use more grounded clothes for the characters. And considering that Claire is riding a bike into town at night in late September, yeah, a jacket and pants makes more sense than the original, as does a tank top and pants for Jill over a tube top and skirt. Sure, I think it could have worked if Jill had been having one last night at the club and her story was extended so it started right at the beginning of the outbreak, with her going to her apartment or the RPD to get a change of clothes to spend most of the game in, but without that I can't really see that outfit making much sense. The game begins two days into the outbreak so the idea of Jill being stuck with what she was wearing because she got caught up in the outbreak really doesn't hold much water. Although, if you recall, the pre-release material for RE2 only showed Leon in his police uniform, even for the scenes where in the final game he is not wearing it. So it is possible the same will happen with Jill here. I guess we'll have to wait and see on that one. Now with Leon, it wasn't an issue because his outfit was already a special police uniform, so toning it down to be more like SWAT gear allowed them to remain true to the original while also making it look more realistic. It's not about sexism or censorship, it's about Claire and Jill being in civilian clothes that are unfitting for the situation and time of year. As for what they went with, I feel that the new outfits are are a little generic, especially in a world where both exist. Claire's redesign makes her look more like modern Lara Croft, especially Sans jacket towards the end. And Jill looks quite similar to her too, or perhaps closer to the cast of Uncharted. But then, what else could they have done here? Considering how unfit the old outfits were for the setting, the balancing act of making them more fitting while also remaining true to the designs of the originals cannot have been easy. I really don't see how you could approach Jill's outfit in that way, other than making it a tank top and pants. My main concern to how Jill and Claire's outfits look really unmemorable compared to the originals and how Jill's feels lacking in a certain area. While I feel like the future instances of Leon having a Raccoon City alternate costume may well choose the remake version over the original, I just don't see that happening with Claire or Jill's. Alternate costumes have less of a requirement to look realistic for the situation than the core canon costumes do. As such, I feel like Claire and Jill's outfits are too generic to come back as alternate outside of the absolute most comprehensive unlock galleries. Maybe clothes would have fit better for a Code Veronica remake than an RE2 one. As for Jill's lacking element, I think it's her cardigan. They seem to have given her a white undershirt under the blue one to represent that, but I think the large section of white is needed to break up the outfit and add some important colour balance, which a small section of visible undershirt does not accomplish. I think something like that would definitely help here. Maybe she could have had a cardigan or hoodie for use in colder areas, during a rainy section, when running through a burning building, etc, and it could get ruined or torn off towards the end. Maybe Carlos could tear it up to wrap Jill's wounds after her infection before he heads to the hospital for supplies. I think something like that would be a good nod to the original that also helps her look more distinct and true to the original while additionally having a purpose in the story. Fortunately, the classic outfit looks very true to the original, unlike Claire's or Carlos's, and the inevitable PS1 models will be fun, especially if they also apply to Nemesis. But overall, I'm really excited for the game, even if it's releasing in April instead of mid-February on Jill's day. For one, it's just good to see Jill in a proper game again for the first time since 2012. Getting to explore more Raccoon City streets is also a plus, since there's so little of it in RE2. I do wish we could have kept over Michelle Ruff as Jill's voice actress though, but I expected a change after two. Imagine if Nemesis ended up being the one character to keep their old voice. Wouldn't that be wild? Just don't make it the Operation Raccoon City version, please. Stars. And I do have one other concern about Jill's new design before we depart. Why does she kinda look like Mila Jovovich when viewed from the side? I mean, haven't she and her hack of a husband already done enough to ruin both RE3 and Jill's reputations? 